When we meet new people, they are of course curious to know a little bit about us, like our name, where we come from, what we do for a living. How would you present yourself when you're in public? Well, allow me to do it to myself. Hello, how are you? I'm Jackie, and I'm an American. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. I now live in Germany because I'm a professor of business and technical English at the University of Applied Sciences, Berlin. And um, at the moment, I'm working in Brazil because there uh, I'm at a, a university in Belo Horizonte uh, where I'm teaching uh, teachers and students how to give presentations effectively. Well, how was that? Didn't I make a great impression on you? Not really? But wasn't my English perfect? Well, perhaps my English wasn't so bad. However, that's not the only factor that plays a role when we're trying to make an impression on people when we meet them for the first time. You've probably noticed that there was something missing in this form of communication that we had. There's something that just keeps us from being interested and impressed by the presenter when he's saying something about himself. What is the problem? Well, let's just try it one more time. Let me introduce myself. My name is Jackie Poplington. I'm an American. I'm from Los Angeles. However, now I live in Germany. I'm a professor at the Boyd University of Applied Sciences, Berlin. I teach technical and business English. Presently, though, I'm in Brazil, in a city called Belo Horizonte. Here, I'm teaching teachers and students to give presentations effectively. I hope you could tell there's a real difference. What has happened? What has changed? Well, first of all, my voice is strong. It gives you the feeling of confidence. You, you can believe in this person. He knows what he's saying. Also, it's emotive. I feel like I'm speaking from the heart. And the people get this feeling that there's real communication going on. Then also the intonation pattern of the voice is going down at the end of every sentence, as it normally does. But what happens when we don't do that, when we stay up with the voice? It sounds something like this. My name is Jackie Pocklington. I'm an American. Uh, I come from Los Angeles, however now I'm living in Germany. That's weird. Nobody ever talks like that normally. Well, if we talk like that, and we, we do so because we're nervous, then we, we get this feeling that what I'm saying is really important. Worse yet, uh, we, we're not even, it sounds like we're not even sure what we're saying. And worst of all, we are clueless, oblivious to the fact that when we're talking like that, we're not making at all any kind of favorable impression on our audience. Why does my voice do this? Well, we never actually talk like this, do we? It's because we're in public. And when we're in public, we get nervous. Then we start to worry about what we're going to say next. On top of that, if we're going to speak in a foreign language, then we're also worried about how to formulate the sentences correctly. So we have these two distractions, and it becomes weird. While we're talking, we're never giving full attention to what we're saying. We're always worried about what's going to come next, and then how to formulate it. And then, what we're saying sounds empty. And it makes no strong, favorable impression upon the audience.
What can we do to sound normal again and to make a strong, favorable first impression on our audience? The problem is that when we're speaking in public, we need to serve two masters at the same time. While we want to then focus on the one hand on our voice being strong, emotive, and coming down with the intonation pattern at the end of sentences, we also have to pay attention to what it is that we're saying and how to formulate it. However, this is a dilemma. You can only serve one master at a time. When these two compete against each other, you cannot think about how your voice is working effectively. At the same time, think about what it is that you're saying. How can we overcome this dilemma? We have to practice again and again, paying attention to our voice to develop the habit of speaking strongly and emotively and getting that intonation pattern to come down regularly at the end of every sentence. We practice until we have developed the habit of speaking effectively with our voice, despite our nervousness and our worries about what we're saying. And that is the trick. We can serve two masters at the same time. The one master we will give our full attention to, the content and the formulation of our ideas. The other master we serve through the power of habit. We will then be worried completely about what we're saying, but the other master is being served because we don't even have to think about it. It happens automatically. What about you? Is there any hope that you can improve your style of speaking when you're presenting yourself in public? Well, I have good news for you and bad news for you. The bad news is that if you don't do something about this problem, it won't disappear like magic. No way. The good news is that it actually is not all that difficult to solve this problem. Go find a friend to work with. When you are practicing, then he can tell whether your voice is strong, is emotive, or coming down regularly, or not, at the end of sentences. It is intensive work. However, suddenly, let's say within about 15 minutes, there's some kind of switch that goes off in your head and click. Presto, you have acquired the habits that you need to present yourself effectively in public, whatever language it is that you are speaking. Go change your habits and make a real positive difference in the effectiveness of your first and lasting impressions that you make on the public. It's worth it. This little investment that you make on your speaking style will boost your self-confidence and change the course of your life. Thank you for your attention. All the best for the development of your professional life. Bye.